right, man. Well, I, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to kind of repeat the same question I talked to you at the, on the, I guess, the Comic-Con Sam thing about the uh, Enter the Dojo, the music of Cobra Kai Live. Since oh, it sounds Kai. great. Yeah. I mean, Zach will, Zach will have much to contribute. Okay. Let's let's start with that. We, we, we'll get into the video game and then the, the Netflix success later. But um, I was so blown away by, you know, seeing Cobra Kai, the music live, you guys performed. I felt like I was in an actual episode of Cobra Kai. I can picture, you know, uh, Johnny Lawrence, you know, in the back drinking some Coors Banquet, you know, and he performed. Or back. Johnny Lawrence right in front of you playing guitar. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. <laughs> so actually, let's start with that, man. How, how did you know that he actually could play it? And how did he get formed uh, about uh, performing this his theme song with you guys? Though? I actually don't remember. Leo might remember. <laughs> <laughs> we knew he played guitar. I mean, someone told us he played guitar. Maybe, honestly, mm -hmm. it might have been him. Um, yeah. And so then when we were putting the show together and we were like inviting the cast and crew and creators, it was just like, oh, should we ask Billy to play? And uh, he was super on board. I, I know. Mm -hmm. And uh, took it super seriously. He showed up to our rehearsal like one or two nights before, like to do like a run through and like knocked it out of the park. Uh, and then he uh, surprised Zach on stage a little bit with some uh, some extra extra moves that we yeah, didn't know he, he had been practicing. He learned he learned like the lead guitar part, and he was supposed to be playing the rhythm part. And then you could see me like in the video, like oh, surprising. <laughs> yeah, he's also like so tall. He's like yeah. really yeah, tall, he's tall and really built and like legit you know practices like martial arts and like he's he's an intimidating figure but very nice yeah. very nice guy. i hope yeah, i'm still nice i hope i'm still that ripped when i'm his age <laughs> yeah oh, absolutely Definitely. that's the goal <laughs> um and then he also had another surprise guest uh you know um i'm blanking on his name the guy who did the you're the best uh jason page yes thank you how did that get put together? That's pretty cool. <laughs> We've worked with Jason um, on other things. He's a session vocalist in town, oh. and he's best known for uh, being the singer of the original Pokemon theme song. Um, so that's he, and he loves to let you know about that. And mm -hmm. we love it because we love the theme song. It's like one of our favorites. So when we we started working with him and we found that, I was like, okay, any any chance we get to work with him again would be great. Yeah, and he, we. And he's such a he's so good with that style too and like the showmanship of it we yeah. like we really knew we wanted to do you're the best as as a uh and encore final final one um it, like we had been talking about that since the very 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 beginning it was like oh we got to do you're the best like you know last last call um and so uh and then i don't know it just clicked that that he's the perfect guy to get to come sing it very cool. What was those giant, I guess it was like Japanese drums you had on stage. So I think stage right, you know. Taiko, Taiko drums, which we use in the show all the time. And uh, I mean, that was really just some like ridiculous showmanship. <laughs> like, I loved it though. We, you know, we spent, we spent a lot of time being like, how do we make this show like look really cool? And at some point I, I just started like calling up, like I own a Taiko drum. Um, but I was like, no, we need bigger Tyco drums. Like we need to, like, I really want to like bang this thing. And, uh, so we just like call up some percussion rental companies. And, like, <laughs> I sent my assistant to drive up to Santa Clarita and came back with just like a freaking car filled with like giant drums. It was amazing. Um, that ended up being a big hit. So, uh, I'm glad we did it. Very cool. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like the 80s. We always had those giant amps that really just will look just for a show, but it looked awesome on stage. <laughs> I mean, the dream yeah, would like be we... the dream would be to have walls of amps and then also have like our drummer Sam like doing the Neil Pert 360 setup with like a gong and like two yeah. gongs in the background. And like that would be the absolute dream. Well, I know you guys did this at uh, the whiskey and then you also did it in Spain, right? Was there any talk about yeah. any more of these? I thought this was so cool because I love I love film, TV shows, and music, and combining all that in a live experience was amazing. You know, I the the reception we got in both places was pretty amazing. Um, Spain was super fun, just as like an extra note because we used a local Spanish band, um, so it was like this whole other like fun musical collaborative experience where like we got off the plane and like showed up to rehearsal and like it was a bunch of 
Spanish musicians who were all amazing, who had like learned all the music. Some of them were and, kids. Like, they were like yeah, in yeah, their I mean, early they were, 20s. Yeah, they're younger than us. Like it was, uh, it was great. It was, it was really fun. Um, the reception of both was amazing. I think we definitely want to do more. I think we have more tricks up our sleeves, so to speak, thinking about like season three and beyond with what we could perform. Uh, we just uh, can't do a live show right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, uh, now that the show has come out on Netflix, the following is so, 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 so much bigger. So we're hoping when we can do a live show, we'd like, you know, we can really do something awesome. I don't think there's a lot like, film music and tv music is having like a thing right now you know mm. we're in like a, a moment and people want to go see it live and i think that cobra kai translates better than most into actually putting on like a concert that is fun oh, and yeah. so like i think with the like netflix popularity and zeitgeist like there's a real opportunity to to to, to bring it to the people yeah let's talk about the whole netflix day because i i I thought everyone already knew how amazing this show was. And it's, in a way, it's like, it's cool, but I'm also a little offended. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, there's a new fan base and people are like, Oh, we take, it per- we take it personally. <laughs> yeah. We hold yeah. grudges. We, we remember every single person that laughed at us when we said it's on YouTube. And we remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. You know, we were talking to John Hurwitz, like, literally the day before it came out, two days before it came out. Um, and he said, he was like, yeah, it's, you know, hopefully it'll do well, but you know, it feels like we might kind of be like an indie band who suddenly is like getting signed to a big label. And it was like a great metaphor that then turned out to be true times a thousand. Um, wow. Cause yeah, but, I mean, it's just what, Zach, what do you think the fan base is like done? Quintuple? I mean, it's 10 I times. Mean, yeah, like, it's, like, I'll like, say, and I, and I know that I speak for Leo too, when I say that, like, the most important thing for us about this is that it's very cool to just see like our friends talk about it, our family talk yeah. about it. Yeah. It's cool that like our family and friends can be proud to like say like, oh, we know the composer. That that I think makes us feel special. And obviously we're, we've are we been incredibly proud of the show and our work and it's done a lot for us career wise too. Like, we're, and we love the people we work with. It's like an amazing crew. Um, and we're just happy that everyone kind of gets to watch it now and, and see how how great of a show it is. And the best part is that season three, we think, is the best season. So, <laughs> yeah. like, people are going to get really excited. Also, there's nothing on TV, so they're going to get extra right. excited. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing else to watch, so you better watch yeah. season three. Well, Leo, I think that last interview, you said that uh, this actually concert actually inspired some stuff you could, for season three score you guys were working on. Yeah. yeah, the the concert was like an awesome musical experience that allowed Zach and I to really like work out like the material. Because like when we're writing cues for Cobra Kai, especially in season one and also in season two, like sometimes they're pretty short and like a real banger is only like, a minute long um and actually one comment that we would always get like with the first couple soundtracks is people are like oh my god i love this track i wish it was longer i need like a seven minute loop and so you know we weren't going to go on stage and play a bunch of 60 second score cues and then like yeah. pack it up and call it a night um so from the very get-go this was like a real uh exercise in uh musical development um and and I, I know I speak for Zach and, and myself in saying that like, God, that was really freaking fun. Like we just, we started going down the list and we're like, okay, like uh, quiver, how are we going to expand it? How long do we think it should be? Do we need like a new B section? Can we, how should we use the like lineup of instruments we've decided to like distribute those parts? Like how are we going to play it? And in the process, we did kind of come up with new ideas think of ways to like expand old ideas. Sometimes as simple as just like a reharmonization we hadn't done yet in the show. And then suddenly it's like, oh my God, how have we not used this? And like, yeah, you might hear that in season three. Um, it, it, I don't know, it just provided this whole new outlet to be creative with the material where we were away from picture and could really just think about the music. Um, I, Zach, do you have some stuff to expand on that? No, I think that was great. I don't. He's spot on. There's, there there's a lot. There's a like, lot. There's a lot was, of stuff. That, I, a lot of stuff in yeah, season I, three. I, 
that we that we yeah, took from and, it. And we can't like honestly, like I don't think we could overstate how um I don't know, just how like fun the process of putting the live show together was. Like um, yeah. total blast. It was fun total to blast. experience though. So. Um, Thanks so let's for talk coming. about the video game that you guys uh, just did a score for. Uh, oh, yeah. Kai. Yeah. It's a, a Cobra Kai, the Karate Kid saga continues. It's this fun side scroller available. Uh, was it different, like, you know, uh, taking you doing a, a video game score compared to the TV series? It was a very interesting um, experience for uh, a couple reasons. We hadn't done a game before. So when you do a game, you're mostly, you're not scoring the game like to picture. We normally work when we have Cobra Kai, we have the episode up on our screens where, you know, we're literally scoring the scene with a video game. You're just kind of writing music. You're say you're given like a tone. You say like, hit the tone, hit the, is it a boss battle? Is it a neutral kind of thing? Um, but you're not, you know, you're not scoring something on screen. It's just a different, and it's also happening simultaneously to the developers working. So it was a different, um, like set of, of creative skills that you need to work with. It's kind of actually like working with the live band. Like you're almost like creating songs really. Um, the interesting thing I think came from the fact that um, because we do the music for the show, like by nature of us just doing the music for the game, it was going to sound like Cobra Kai. So there was never any, their biggest note was like, we just wanted to sound like Cobra Kai. It was like, okay cool like yeah <laughs> it will it will sound like over kai so right. but the interesting thing too is that we were not allowed to use um due to like licensing issues we were not allowed to use any material from the television show oh, so wow. all the music in the game is brand new think of it as kind of just like this like spiritual like sibling to the music it's almost like a like an a extended a universe a company yeah, yeah, yeah like extended universe <laughs> exactly and um uh, we also like to talk about how like the video game music, just in general, video game music is a huge influence on the Cobra Kai score on the TV show score. And you can hear that in tracks like Strike First or Hallway Hellscape or Mall Fight. And people pick up on that in like YouTube comments. Like you say like, oh, this reminds me of like Capcom. It's like, yeah, exactly. Um, so it was a very natural progression uh, to do this game. And it really felt like Cobra Kai and it's like in its primordial form. Um, and we we love we love like these types of games. We grew up on them, and it was just it was a total blast. We're, and we're really excited that the album was able to come out too, because we were worried that we wouldn't be able to share it. Um, but we did, so we're happy that it's out. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much for taking your time to talk to me. I can't wait for season three, and hopefully we'll see you live again some other, uh, sometime down the road. You know? Oh yeah, I hope so too. It's gonna happen. We'll do All it. Right. We'll do All it. Right. Thanks Thank for having guys. us. Yeah, no problem, thanks for man. having us.